Welcome back. Today in the shop we have a 2008 Subaru Outback and we'll be installing a trailer hitch. We'll start by unpackaging everything, inspecting the trailer hitch and making sure we have all the necessary accessories. Upon first inspection of the accessories I found we had the instructions. Four spacers, four lock washers, four flat washers, four M10 retaining bolts, looks like a half inch carriage bolt, carriage bolt style spacer block and a nut. Also the receiver pin. The tools we'll need for the M10 would be a 17 millimeter. For the half inch, 19, maybe a three quarter. 19 seems to fit pretty well. Um, you're going to need a torque wrench that at least goes up to 110 foot pounds. So the two torque specs for the M10 would be 49 foot pounds and 110 foot-pounds for the half-inch carriage bolt. The socket and ratchet I'm going to use to chase out the threads in the subframe to make sure they're nice and clean. In addition, a nice brush to brush out the rust because these retaining bolt holes haven't been used and what I noticed on this vehicle is that the plastic covers were missing already. So a lot of moisture got up in there. A lot of rust. If the, if the retaining if the plastic retainer was still in there, you'd probably get away with just brushing it out. However, I'll feel more comfortable chasing out the threads. So my socket and extension is simply to assist me with, with that process. We'll need a pry bar because we're going to have to remove the exhaust hangers. And this will assist us with that. And of course a drop light. We'll start by jacking up the vehicle and placing jack stands on it. That's a pretty straightforward process. After a vehicle has been raised, jack stands in place, I lowered them down and rested the vehicle on the jack stands and placed a jack under the center of the vehicle. The reason for placing the jack under the vehicle is because we're going to have to lower the exhaust to gain access to the retaining bolts and they give us enough clearance to install the trailer hitch. You don't want to put too much pressure on the front flex pipe on the exhaust so you don't want to let it hang down freely. So I'm just going to calculate right about where I need it to hang down. I placed a block on top of the jack. Now that we're under the vehicle there's going to be a total of five exhaust hangers we're going to have to remove. You see one here right in front of the rear axle. We're going to have to take and pop that one off. In addition on each muffler you'll have two more. There's one towards the front of the vehicle and one right here towards the rear of the muffler. This is the left driver side and here's a shot of the right passenger side. To help make removal easier, take some penetrating oil and spray it on the exhaust hanger. I want to take and inspect the retaining nuts that are going to be used to mount our trailer hitch. And you can see the plastic plugs that would normally be in place have been removed previously and we have a lot of rust build up inside so I'm going to take and soak them down with some penetrating oil give it some time to soak and I'm going to do this repeat this process on the passenger side as well the retaining nuts that are going to be used on this vehicle will be this furthest front one towards the front of the vehicle and this one right here, one right after the heat shield. Okay, next we can start removing the retaining hangers. Much easier with two hands. repeat that on the passenger side as well. Once all five hangers are removed, lower the exhaust down on top of the jack or the strap. Okay next I'm over on the driver's side of the vehicle. We'll be repeating this process on the passenger side as well. But right above the exhaust on the two retaining nuts that we previously saturated with penetrating oil, we're going to take our brush and now start prepping these Except our retaining bolts. 
Now you can see these are pretty bad, pretty nasty shape. I'm gonna take a little bit more penetrating oil. I'm gonna try to get them as good as possible using this process. However, I'm still not quite comfortable with it. So now I want to take and chase these threads out since they're so rusted. What I'll be using is a M10 1.25 tap to accomplish this along with my extension and swivel. Make sure we get it started as straight as possible. And you'll know once the threads start catching. Okay, we're just now breaking through. Most likely if I would have just threw a, a bolt in there, it would have ended up cross-threading and gouging up the threads. And this will make sure that doesn't happen. Repeat that step on all four nuts. Now we're going to have to determine what spacers we're going to have to use to level the trailer hitch. However, for these M10 retaining bolts, it's going to be lock washer, flat washer. This half inch carriage bolt and spacer is going to go through the existing tow loop in the rear of the vehicle. So if you come underneath the rear of the vehicle, you'll see the tow loop. We're going to take this carriage bolt and spacer and put it through the top just like so. I'm going to use this to hold the the hitch up in place and then we'll determine how many spacers we're going to need and what spacers we may need in the back. Okay now we're going to work the hitch up and over the exhaust if I can. Just like so. This is always easier with a second hand. However, we're going to take and install the nut just to help keep us in place. Just like so. Now to determine what spaces we're going to need in the back. Push it up flush. Make sure everything is coming in contact. And what I find when I push it up flush against, when everything's up tight against, I'm already spaced away from the front. If you can see that gap in between the existing tow loop. So I wouldn't want to space this down any further. Otherwise I'll be getting further away. And it seems like I got a pretty nice even gap. On this particular vehicle, it doesn't have the extra retaining brackets that I've seen on other ones. And that's where you would need the spacer because you're going to be going up to a bracket and then the backside would need a spacer to make up that gap. However, since this one doesn't have the brackets, there's no need to space it. Now we can take and start installing the retaining bolts. You can put a little bit of never seeds on these to help with future removal if you ever plan on removing. I'm just going to snug that one up. But as you can see, what I was saying is that when this is pushed up tight, I don't have a different gap between the front and the back when it's pushing up against the front loop. Now if I was pushing up against the front loop, 
and I had a, a gap in the back side like that per se, then I know that I have to put a spacer under the front. However, in this setup, that's not going to be necessary. And there's a little bit of a adjustment. So what I did, I centered it with the toe loop. So I got everything centered. And as you can see, everything pulled up nice and flush. But if you do have a different scenario, they're there just in case. Okay, now I'm going to set my torque wrench up for the M10 bolts. I'm going to take it to 40, and then 9. First I'm going to run down with a socket and ratchet. taking torque from this back. Now we're using a pretty long extension. This isn't 100% recommended but to get me past the exhaust. Jack this up to 110. Please. Run this up by hand first. And this is something I want you to take notice to if you can see in here. While well, I was saying, I determined we didn't need any shins because we have a nice even spacing between this toe loop. And if I were to put one shim in the back, it would have brought, brought the front down. Or front end tighter if I put one in the front it would have made it uneven if I would have put all four in we would have been way much further pull everything in close and torque get this back 110 okay Okay, now we can put the exhaust back up in. It's going to be much easier to reinstall the hangers than it was to remove them. So, getting back up top of the plastic. Start with the back hangers. And you'll find that the, the you can just slide them on by hand. These are all the original hangers. And thank you to my second hand camera lady. And here's a shot of the hitch once the vehicle's been lowered. Now a couple of things to keep in mind. Now this ain't meant to go towing cars and stuff with and whatnot. Or heavy trailers. This is mainly for extra luggage rack capacity or bike racks and whatnot. Gross load capacity when used as a weight carrying hitch, 3,500 pounds trailer weight, and 300 pounds tongue weight. Never exceed manufacturer's recommended towing capacity. And all non-trailer loads applied to this product must be supported by auxiliary stabilizing straps. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned.